Hey guys, welcome here. I've got an exclusive interview with Sunny Liu from VeChain. And Sunny, you know, I've been talking about VeChain for a while, but can you quickly describe what VeChain is? Yeah, um, VeChain is the next version of public blockchain for smart contract and D apps. And we are able to serve, you know, multiple different industries or multiple different use cases. Yeah, so you're really excited for the mainnet launch that's coming up soon. Right? Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, like, How's that going? Like, how's the preparation process? And like, well, right now it's uh, running pretty well. Yeah. Actually, we finished you know all of the coding work like in the middle of April, and mm -hmm. since then we start to do the testing. Right, uh, right. Honestly, you know, I, I really see the testing very important because you know as the CIO before, mm -hmm. um, I got a philosophy like. To any kind of a software project or system project, you should put at least 50% of budget and time in testing. Yes, that's so, the most important part, right? Exactly, exactly. So uh, we start the internal testing like Alpha 1.0 mm -hmm. uh, in the middle of the April, and actually tomorrow we're going to the second phase 2.0, right. and we already send the code to some professional team. Right, right. Uh, even including the cybersecurity team of PwC, right. uh, Hacken from Ukrainian, right. and uh, slow, most, slow Mist from China, right. like four or five, you know. Uh, so you sent to multiple parties to try to test yes. out and make sure that the main net code exactly, is Exactly, exactly. And wow. also we're going we're gonna to launch like a Bounty uh, project website. Mm -hmm. So that means if you find some bugs, you, you're going to report it, you will receive some VeChain token stuff. Right, right, right. And until June 8, around June 8, mm -hmm. um, you will be public. Uh, you, you will be open source, you will be public testing. Right. So the testnet will launch by then. Until end of June, like 30th of June, we're going to launch okay. in a minute. Right, so the roadmap would be right now, uh, Testing in turn testing with different external party members. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. you go for the test net with the bug bounty program and then yeah. this mainline. So it's an exciting time. So it's finally oh, yeah. finally seeing your baby being launched in the <laughs> oh, world, yeah, right? Yeah. Well, I'm quite confident actually. Even though uh, we already received some like quick feedback about mm -hmm. our codes, they love it. I yeah, would say they love it. Um, basically, you know, um, when we look at the codes, actually I know that, um, mm -hmm. we basically start everything from scratch. Right. We're not like a copy and pasting, you know. Really? We, so we rewrite the codes for most of the part of our codes actually. Oh, okay. So it's mostly new code. Yeah. The thing. only thing we keep as the Ethereum, let's say, is the EVM part. Okay. But for the rest of things, we just... Um, but why did you change so much the code? What was the need? Well, you know, we are aiming for massive public adoption to right. the enterprise. Uh, right. Honestly, uh, right now, if you look at the public blockchain like Ethereum, you know, there is no really commercial applications or enterprise opinion running right. that. There is a reason. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we make uh, lots of you know technical features. Right. Uh, for example, the, the technical feature MPP multi-party payment protocol. Okay. It basically is 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 really made for the enterprises. Okay. So that means even the enterprise doesn't have like a VeChain token or any cryptos, yeah. but they're still able to um, you know align with some others like a sponsor to right. help them to pay for the transaction fees. Okay, so it's, like it's a hub, it's a it's a different system where you can sponsor your fee. So why why would you have a sponsor then? What's the purpose? Well, of that make you know the enterprise easier to uh, to to testify or to, to just try to explore. Right. Before right. you know, you gotta think about oh, I'm an enterprise. Um, uh, how can I, uh, you know, acquire some tokens? And um, most of the exchange even don't have like enterprise account. Right, know, right, right. All right. of the stuff. Uh, how they do the accounting book or how they do the tax. Bigger enterprise have a bigger problem. Right, right. But luckily to see, we already see some like bigger enterprise. They mm -hmm. already some kind of you know find a way to manage the part. For example, the DMB, GO, and PWC. Yeah, they recently they acquired, they acquired tokens. Right. Actually, people are asking like, yeah, they acquired entities like the equities. Mm -hmm. uh, do they acquire tokens? Uh, I got an answer here. Yes, they buy tokens. They buy both token and equity, right? Exactly. Right, yeah. and that's a part of the token community as well. Yeah, right? for sure. You know, even those enterprises, they're going to the crypto space, they're going to pop, uh, blockchain space, right? They're going right. to play with our rules. 
<laughs> it's true. It's true. You can't create. See, that's the thing with these tokens. You can't create them out of thin air, right? So, yeah. Sure. Sure. And then so so okay. So VeChain pretty much rewrote everything to have custom features for enterprise. About a bunch of multiple features. Yes. And then this is something that you want to test and make sure it is reliable. So in terms of deploying the mainnet, so the mainnet is going to be launched, and then afterwards, what sort of decentralized applications do you see coming on to VeChain? Well, um, actually, we have two parts. Um, well, let's say three parts. Um, you know, in the last two or three years, we already got like 20 something cases mm -hmm. with all of the big names we already announced, like Reno, BMW, that kind of applications. Right. They will be acting as like uh, in the first section, they will be migrate from the previous consortium blockchain to the public blockchain. Okay, so there's a, there was a previous consortium blockchain. So which one were mm -hmm. they in before? Like what, what were they doing before in the blockchain space? Well, I mean, they, it's, it's, since 2015, VeChain started as a consortium blockchain. Right. And they provide, you know, the enterprise solution right. to different enterprises. Um, in the past two and three years, you know, even we accumulated around 20 some use cases, but still we feel like working the consortium blockchain is like, you know, working the LAN network, but the future should be internet, that means right. the public blockchain. Right, so right, So right. that's why, you know, last year we decided that we, we, we're going to go through the ICO process, mm -hmm. we're going to, you know, upgrade our blockchain to be the public blockchain. Mm -hmm. That's why we even rewrite our white paper this time we're gonna start from the English version. <laughs> so I think the Western people will be more than happy than before. Right. And it should be released in like a couple of days now. Oh, so you're gonna have a new white paper to Yeah, we have a new white paper. paper. Um, so, what if so, so those use cases, let's say, is migrated to, uh, to the public blockchain. Right, so because they were already running on the consortium yeah. blockchain, so you're already yeah. doing stuff since 2015, now migrating that to the public blockchain yeah. and now all yeah. that stuff. And the use case including like any kind of fading for the luxury, uh, data sharing for automobile, mm -hmm. um, oversee traceability for like DIG wines, all of that stuff. Awesome, awesome. And also we got a second um, batch, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, we have been talking to, you know, like 14, 15 uh, projects right now. Mm -hmm. They are most likely like a traditional project or they already have some business cases. Right. And they just want to be blockchainized or like cryptonized. Right. So that kind of project actually were quite exciting because they, firstly, they have real business. Um, right. One of the projects I'm really excited about that is in the automobile industry. Right. They even have like roughly fifty million dollars per month that kind of revenue already. Right. right. Only say they don't really care about how much money they can raise because right. they don't need that. But they do need like blockchain or crypto economy to you know connect more parties, uh, motivate more users, that kind of deal. Exactly, it's about community building, right? Exactly. exactly. That, I mean, yeah. this famously says that the ICO is not the initial coin offering, it's the initial community I offering. have to agree with that. And Actually, even for VeChain, it's the same thing. Yeah. You know, when we launched the ICO, we raised about, let's say, $20 million or something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. But when we look at the market cap of VeChain now, it's like 2.5 something billion, right? <laughs> so exactly. the initial fund's money, I mean, yeah, it's important, but it's not really like ultimate goal. Our ultimate goal is build up the community and grow right. the community. Right. So that that's a that's a thing. That's a that's it's a it's a great way because like you know the community is so enthusiastic about everything VeChain. You know. Yeah. Oh, I, <laughs> well, I have to say, you know, the VeChain community is best community forever. I yeah. Would say. And like they love you, man. It's just like it's like you're <laughs> a hero. Well, I'm the one to keep doing the right work. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, your experiences before. You know, previously you worked as CIO of yeah. um, LV in China. So how does you know, having that enterprise experience um, help you in this blockchain space? You know? Well, actually it helped a lot, I yeah. have to say. Um, honestly, when I, when I find out the blockchain technology, mm -hmm. actually at that time there was no blockchain word even. Right. But I was just looking at the white paper of Bitcoin right. and all the other uh, like color coin technology, that kind of old. That's really also color coin. Yeah. So that's like when Vitalik was looking at Yeah, it. yeah. Bef even before Vitalik, you know, oh. released a white paper of a serum or something. <laughs> um, but I, I got a feeling like, you know, this technology is, is disruptive and transformative. Mm -hmm. It must apply to some, it must be used for some applications. Right. So that, that was my vision. That was, that even now it, it is still my vision and right. goal to achieve that. So, um, the experiences when I, as a CIO, mm -hmm. actually is very helpful because 
the CIO job is acting as a, like a bridge between mm -hmm. the technology and the business. Ah. So usually I'm doing two things. Either I find new technology, I will think about, okay, what business can benefit from the technology. Mm -hmm. That means I'm going to build up some application out of that, right? right? Or either business has some requirement, say, oh, I want to do a new e-commerce, or I want to launch a digital campaign or digital marketing, that kind of stuff. I need to think about what kind of technology can help them. Right, right, right. To right, fulfill right. the requirements. So your role was always to understand the, all the business needs, yes. what they want, and then understand the technology needs and yes. boom. So I have to have like, for sure I got like technical background, uh, mm -hmm. like 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago, I was a CCIE for, as a network engineer. Mm -hmm. I also did coding before. Um, and at the same time, I need to have like a business sense. I need right. to understand, you know, what business yeah. really needs. Right. Um, not every time, you know, like a cool technology can solve everything, not like that. <laughs> no. But you got to bring out like solution other than technology. So right. that's, uh, that's how you think. So I would say this kind of thinking make definitely very helpful to uh, build up the VChain because that means we know how to talk to the different enterprises. Right. Uh, I have to say right now VChain seems to be, you know, the only one, or only few, let's say, right. be humble. <laughs> <laughs> like have a business application adoption to the blockchain. Exactly, because like you know, we, we have different business wants and needs, and it's been taking a long time to have actual applications use yeah. cases for blockchain. Yeah. So you know, I really hope we can be that bridge where you know they can find their needs and be that yeah. communication bridge, and then try to encourage them to develop for blockchain. Yeah. Well, actually, um, in the past two three years, we have been talking to multiple different big enterprises, mm -hmm. even like. DMVGO, that kind of a $3 billion company, yeah. and they have 80,000 customers. That's the, the interesting thing, you know, I always said, you know, the way that you guys approach it, you guys choose a partner that can bring you more partners. Exactly. <laughs> they're, they're like a multiplier, right? <laughs> so, but anyway, when I talk to them, they have a concern, actually, all right. about all of the ex existing public blockchains. Right, right. Like, you know, we, we got a question about that. Firstly, people are, people are believing blockchain is going to change the world is going to be the technology, right? right. At the same time, we don't see um, you know, massive commercial applications. Even Vitalik was saying like last November, saying like, yeah, right now we don't see massive application. The only application is the ICO, I mean, technically. Yeah. Or oh, CryptoKitties. Or oh, CryptoKitties. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, um, actually during the today's meetup, I'm mm -hmm. going to uh, you know, present the four different points we find out Awesome. including the governance model, economic model, and also the matching services or public services, also the capability to be professional. Yeah. You know, with these kind of four solutions, we are able to talk to the uh, enterprises or, or different like, business owners, because when they think about build up application, on, on blockchain for real, they are thinking about the business. Yeah, not sure. really. That's, that's like, where all the money is, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. If I want to invest something, mm -hmm. to build something, I'm looking for returns, right? right? I'm looking for the values I can provide to my customers. Yeah. So I gotta be serious. So, right. <laughs> so last time I, I was in Boston um, to do a meetup in Harvard and MIT. Right. You know, I got a the very positive feedback. Is like. The, the, the audience just told me, oh, finally, I feel like talking to grown-ups. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. I, I think this is why you know, the enterprise are really um, like waiting to talk to us. Right. Um, and, and that's with the continuous partnerships, actually. Uh, we got to have more to announce for sure. It's awesome. like in a pipeline. So, uh, let's see. I mean, that's we're, right. we're quite right. excited about that. I'm really excited for you guys. I mean, I'm really excited that the mainnet's being deployed and then yeah. finally it's, people can start building and, of course, um, delivering on the values that yeah. they promise. So I really hope that goes out really well and I'm just excited for everything. Yeah, for sure. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you so much, Sunny. Yeah, thank me. you. And, you know, I'll see you guys later. And